Hello class. Welcome to Understanding Elasticity Lesson 3. So this is the one where we actually calculate a value for elasticity from a table of numbers or uh, from an equation and then we interpret that. You might remember that in Lesson 2 we, we worked out the formulas. I gave you four, really three formulas plus one in uh, calculus that you don't need for now. But I gave you three formulas and now uh, it's time to uh, practice that. So if you're given a demand equation or a table of prices and corresponding quantities demanded, it's possible to calculate an elasticity value. I think it's best at first we do a couple by hand so you can see how they look and then uh, we'll do some in uh, Excel. So uh, given this demand equation, suppose you are asked to calculate arc elasticity uh, where P is 10 and P is say 15. So the formula for arc elasticity uh, is Q2 minus Q1 over Q2 plus Q1 all over P2 minus P1 over P2 plus P1. Now if you don't know where this formula came from you should go back and look at uh, lesson number two or if you just all you care about is this one lesson then uh, the equation in your book probably looks like that one or it might be written in a slightly different way uh, use my equation or the one in your book it shouldn't make any difference you should get exactly the same answer so we need Q values and P values you're given the P values let's just arbitrarily mark that P1 and we'll call this P2 so we need the Q values that go with that so based on this equation if P is 10 Q is 50 minus 2 times 10. 2 times 10 is 20. 50 minus 20 is 30. And when P is 15, Q is 50 minus 2 times 15. 2 times 15 is 20. 50 minus 20, excuse me, 2 times 15 is 30. 50 minus 30 is 20. All right, so there are our values for P and Q. And now it's just a simple matter of uh, plugging them in. So it would be 20 minus 30 over 20 plus 30 all over 15 minus 10 over 15 plus 10. Sometimes students ask me, does it matter which one is P1 and which one is P2? No, it doesn't matter. But if this is P1, then that needs to be Q1. And if this is P2, that needs to be Q2. So that's kind of a joke, but keep your P's and Q's together and you should be all right. It doesn't matter which one is P1 and which one is P2. All right, so clean up this math a little bit. 20 minus 30 is minus 10 over 20 plus 30 is 50. All over 15 minus 10 is 5. All over 15 plus 10 is 25. Now taking that denominator, inverting and multiplying, I get minus 10 over 50 times 25 over 5. Now let's see, some of this cancels. That 5 will go into that 10 two times. And that 25 will go into that 50 value equal to minus 1 over 1. Or 1. Minus 1. Well, that's kind of a uh, special case, but there it is. Our elasticity is minus 1. All right. Now let's try one from a table of numbers. Suppose I ask you to calculate arc elasticity from that P is 10 down to P is 14. So we'll let this be point 1 and we'll let this be point 2. So that means Q2 is 20. So it would be 20 minus 40 over 20 plus 40 all over uh, P2 is 14 minus 10 over 14 plus 10 and that's the same as 20 minus 40 is minus 20 over 60 over 4 over 24 inverting and multiplying I get minus 2 over 6 times 24 over 4 so let's see uh, 4 will go into 24 6 times, right? And 6 will go into 6 one time, so I'm left with minus 2 over 1. 
So now we have two elasticities, minus 1 and minus 2. You might ask yourself, well, what does it mean? And there are some rules. Uh, point elasticity of demand is always negative, so we ignore the sign. So taking the absolute value of the elasticity, if it's greater than 1, it's elastic. If it turns out that the elasticity that you calculated is less than 1, it's inelastic. Ignoring the sign now. And if it turns out, the special case, if the elasticity is exactly equal to 1, which is what we got in the first case, that's called unitary elastic. So in the first case, it was unitary elastic. And in the second case, it was elastic. Now before I uh, close out this uh, exercise by hand, I want to try one more. I want to calculate point elasticity here. Point elasticity here. Now those of you who uh, looked already at lesson number two, you know that there is a connection between arc elasticity and point elasticity. The connection is that uh, arc elasticity and point elasticity are exactly the same thing where the point, calculating point elasticity, would be dead square in the middle of whatever the arc was. And that's what happens in this case. If you think about it, we originally had P is 10 and P is 14. And now we're going to calculate point elasticity dead square in the middle of that at P equals 12. So we should get the same answer that we got before. We should get this minus 2 over 1. So let's see if we do. So now we're going to calculate point elasticity. And the formula is 1 over the slope times P over Q. Calculate point elasticity where P is 12. So we're going to let P be 12. And when P is 12, Q is 30. So here we go. It's 1 over the slope times 12 over 30. So far, so good. But now I need to find the slope of that thing over there. And the only way to find slope is to do it the old-fashioned way uh, from middle school, where slope is rise over run. So I need two points to find the slope. In this case, I have three. I only need two. So I'm just going to use, just because it's easier, I'm going to use the first two. All right? So the rise from 10 up to 12 is 2. That's the rise, because P is on the vertical axis. And the run would be from 40 down to 30, which would be minus 10, because right? it went down by 10. So the slope is 2 over minus 10, or 1 over minus 5. Right? So that's the slope. Now I'm going to skip a little step here, because what I have is a slope, and what I need is 1 over the slope. Students oftentimes get confused here. Maybe I shouldn't skip this step. But I need 1 over the slope. What I have is a slope. So 1 over the slope, can you see, would be minus 5 over 1. Can you see that? I hope so. So 1 over the slope is minus 5 over 1. So then I have minus 5 over 1 times 12 over 30. All right. Now it turns out that the 5 will go into 30 six times, all right? And so I'm left with minus 12 over 6 or minus 2 over 1. So it's true. It turns out that point elasticity, dead square in the middle of an arc, is exactly the same thing. All right, so you should practice a few of these, <coughs> and then you should interpret them as elastic, inelastic, or unitary elastic. Now I think I'm going to try the same thing except now in Excel. So let's see if we can get over to Excel. Yeah, can you see that? So I have an equation uh, QD equals 50 minus 2P. Let me just put in some values for P. Let's start with 25, 24, 23, something like that. Just get all the way down to 0. All right, so there are my P values. Now let's find the quantities that go with that. So the quantity is given by that expression 50 minus 2 times the price value. So when the price is 25, the quantity is 0. 
and here are all the other quantities. Okay. Now the formula for elasticity is 1 over the slope times p over q. So we need to find the slope of this equation. Need to find the slope of that equation right there. And uh, <clears throat> I've done it so long I can kind of do them in my head. I can see that the slope is 1 half and uh, you should each work it out to make sure you can get that uh, if you if you're completely clueless about how to find the slope in there the easiest way to do it is to make up two simple numbers for P in fact just take two out of that table over there and get the corresponding Q's that go with that so we could just take uh, these if you wanted to so when we went from P equals 25 down to P equals 24 the rise over run would be the rise is minus 1 and the run is 2 minus 1 and the run is 2 so the slope is uh, 0.5 or really minus 0.5 sorry minus 0.5 but elasticity is 1 over the slope times P over Q so it would be 1 divided by negative uh, 0.5 times the p value which is that divided by the q value which is that now you know what this first one's going to give me an error because I'm dividing through by zero so we can't do that one but let's see if it'll allow me to copy down yeah it will and now we can get all of these there you go so there are all your elasticities the first one's irrelevant it's really infinity so we can take that one out and we can clean these up a little bit if you like sorry computer sort of timed out there alright so now we have uh, the elasticities now some of you will be troubled when you discover that elasticity is different all along the way check it out uh, because you're thinking that elasticity is a measure of slope but it isn't it looks kinda like that but it's really not slope it's something quite different and elasticities are very different all the way in fact for any linear demand curve up at the top can you see that we're at the top here up at the top the thing will be very elastic and as you go down elasticity will fall when you get dead square in the middle which is probably right in here somewhere dead square in the middle it'll be unitary elastic <coughs> and then below below there it will be inelastic okay so that's how you would uh, do it in Excel so one more time now from in Excel you just have your P's and Q's you apply the formula for elasticity. If you've done it right, it should always be that when you're up at the top, it will be elastic, and as you come down the demand curve, it will be less and less elastic. Finally, in the middle somewhere, unitary elastic, and beyond that, zero. All right, so we'll just uh, get rid of all this if we can. And then um, that's the end of calculating elasticity in a lesson four we'll do there I am lesson four we'll do the total revenue test and that should uh, put you in good shape alright I hope that was helpful good luck